What's up, YouTube? Bubbles and Ball Cards back with another video. Hope everybody's doing well out there. Uh, the week is winding down. We are apparently already into the fall. <laughs> I know the weather here has adjusted a little bit. Um, temperature has, has changed, gotten a little cooler. Um, I just wanted to get on. I'm going to try to make this real quick. Just a little discussion. Uh, that I, it, it's something that I've been thinking about. I actually, uh, in tomorrow's podcast episode over on the card chatter, um, shameless plug there, go check it out tomorrow morning, 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, had a really good conversation in this episode with Refractor. Uh, we went over a bit about, um, you know, how Refractor Jones came about and then discussed like, is refractors the only thing he collects and and that sort of thing and then i touched on myself and i know when you guys watch the videos you see like a lot of boxes behind me and stuff like that and i talk about like on the other side of that wall over there i have racks with you know tons of cards on it folks have been to my house and seen like how many cards we actually have and everything and um you know, there, there's been questions brought up during previews if if I have anything in the order because I haven't been sending quite as, you know, I haven't been sending cards really for grading recently. I've been kind of, I have stuff I want to send, but I've been kind of trying to more, the way I described it in the podcast is I've been trying to find, uh, like get back on the path, right? And the best way I can I can explain the place I'm at right now is I love collecting pretty much everything. If if it's cardboard or you know whatever, I have an interest in it. But that also gets into a spot sometimes where it can almost feel like it's growing too big uh, or it's getting out of hand, so to speak, and. I realized, you know, I've mentioned it, there's over 700 graded cards in the collection and then thousands upon thousands of raw cards. And it's cool to have that. Like, I guess, you know, it, it's fun building that collection. And Refractor brought something up, you know, and asked me and he was like, do you think it's because you've had to start your collection over twice? to maybe where things kind of get out of hand or out of place sometimes. And that could be part of it. But I think it's also, you know, we were sending stuff in to get graded. Like, I, the hockey is the best example. We would open hockey and pull out the young guns. And if it was a guy that, you know, was $10, $15, I, I, I felt that was, you know, uh, enough to... To condone sending him in, he was he got enough respect to uh, to be at that ten to fifteen dollar and up threshold. I didn't send anything in lower than that. Um, to see, you know, would he turn out to be a star or or what path he would take? But then I would like keep one of every single player, and it was cool to build that. But at the same time. I like I'll sit down and I'll look through the the slabs of my collection sometimes and I'm like why did I keep this guy or I'd for I'll forget that I have something and I don't want to be at that point I don't want to be where I'm keeping stuff just because so I have decided to really get out the butcher knife and start trimming some fat off the bone um and try to Try to get back into more of what speaks to me, right? Get back into that path, you know. Let it, and it, I've done this before, just this time maybe I'll go a little bit further. But, it, you know, this isn't the first time this has happened. Uh, things will start growing, and then I'll slim it back in to where I'm more content with what I have, and then I'll let it grow, and then I'll bring it back in. And I think that's actually, you know, we were discussing it, and I think it's actually healthy for people to do that. And that's what I wanted to to kind of, you know, get on here and, and just tell folks, you know, maybe 
if you ever feel overwhelmed or if you ever feel like, you know, you've lost direction of what you enjoy within the hobby, um, kind of, you know, evaluate everything you have and then say, okay, do I want to collect a team? Do I want to collect a player? Do I want to collect just a single sport? Do I only want to collect a, a single product? Um, and just evaluate where you're at. There's nothing wrong with going and having multiple different things. You know, you might like this player and this team or these three sports or what have you. Um, I, I'm not saying you have to be like a, a straight, like narrow path, but you know, again, I'll use the hockey as an example. I don't need every player that comes out of a pack and is ten dollars, fifteen dollars or more sent in to be graded and kept in my collection because although I enjoy watching the game of hockey and I'll sit here and watch, you know, any random game that's on, I'm not connected to those players. I'm not connected to those cards. I'm legit just kind of holding them just because. And I don't want to keep spending the money on grading fees or uh, just keeping those cards in the collection for no reason, like no, no reason attached to me. So in hockey specifically, I've realized I like metal universe, the, the metal universe hockey. I like the inserts there. I like the PMGs. I like the jambalayas, um, you know, the rubies, that sort of thing. I love metal universe. Um, I like the Dallas stars players that I, you know, I was working on building that collection a little bit. I love uh, collecting Jason Robertson, I've you know showed that I've gotten you know a good bit of his stuff. Um, I like Alex Ovechkin. I like the Capitals. So I'm gonna try to narrow that collection down to the guys I like. Uh, Pokemon, that's something that I have a lot of, but I'm not planning to narrow it because that's something I just strictly do. I can't sit here and say that I PC a character or anything. I just kind of, that's something I have enjoyment opening the cards. And if one just looks cool, I'll send it in. But I'm also not doing like hundreds of those at a time or, you know, over and over and over. I'll send a couple here or there, mix it in an order. Those have more of a attachment, even though I'm not attached necessarily to a specific character or the cards, uh, a specific set or anything like that. In fact, I've, I've been honest. I, I'm not uh, deep knowledge on, on the Pokemon. It's legit just opening some packs. If the card looks cool, I'll send it in. I don't really know the values of them. Um, that's more of a fun thing. Football, I have some players I like. I, obviously, I like the Ravens. The Mrs. likes Emma Smith. Um... And then there's some other players from like my youth that I enjoy, you know, such as Jerry Rice or maybe a, a Barry Sanders or something like that, you know, but I'm not going to build large collections of those guys. You know, I would say main collection for uh, football would be like Cowboys, specifically Emmett Smith and Ravens guys, um, you know, Ray Lewis, Lamar, that, that sort of thing. Um, baseball, obviously my nationals, the, uh, Michael Taylor, Juan Soto's, um, you know, and baseball, it, those, I think I really enjoy more. Um, I know a lot of people associate or think I'm like deep in vintage, but it's not just vintage. I like the, the hall of fame guys. So, um, something I've noticed on the hall of fame, um, you know, the, the registry list or hall of fame checklist uh, there's some guys from the 90s, from my youth, that I don't have. And those are cheaper cards that I can pick up or try to hunt for. Um, so that's a path that I can I can keep for, like, baseball is trying to knock off even those 80s, 90s guys that I don't have. It doesn't necessarily have to be, you know, the, the 50s guys, where which I have almost all of the Hall of Fame rookies from the 50s. But you, you get what I'm saying. It doesn't have to be, like, DiMaggio or Ted Williams rookies or anything like that. There's small, smaller guys in there that I can still fill the void and enjoy uh, building the collection of that. And, and that's something that I like. Um, and then basketball, uh, I think really basketball, 
The main thing I'm interested in with basketball would be Shaq. Um, you know, I had built a pretty awesome basketball collection. Uh, and then basketball and the hobby, when it got wild, it kind of turned me off a bit. And so, you know, I let a lot of that stuff go. And I did enjoy having it. But at the same time, the opportunity was there to move out of that and into something, you know, to other things that I I really wanted more, I guess, so to speak. Um, it's also a thing where, you know, it, it's not necessarily about the values, but I do want to make sure that when I'm buying, I feel comfortable and safe in. Um, and sometimes when things like the basketball market gets out of hand, you have to evaluate, like, what do you have? Where is it at? What are you into it for? Does it make sense to let go of it? Or is it, do you feel safe with the money you put into it? And sometimes if that answer is no, then you need to understand it's okay to let it go. Um, the likelihood, if, if, if you don't feel safe in it, and you see it's going down, and you let it go, and you decide, well, I kind of want that, give it a little bit and see where it's going to, you know, where it's going to settle to and maybe pick one back up if you really want it. Or maybe if you have, you know, if you have a nine, like you got a card and it's graded a nine and you want another one, buy an eight, you know, bump down a level and then at least you still have that card. Um, but I, I prefer to go with stuff that I feel a little bit more safe in for if I'm going to be sitting on it, I don't want to, you know, put a bunch of money into stuff that I'm going to sit on and then, you know, watch it just keep losing value. Um, it's one thing to enjoy owning things, but it's another thing and it makes it even more difficult. It's the same thing basically that is a battle with wax right now. You know, just because I enjoy owning a car doesn't mean that I want to pay $500 for it today and buy, you know, this time next year, it's $200 right? Um, it's a similar thing with wax. You know, I don't, I don't want to go buy a $500 box of wax, open it up and get $40 worth of cards out of the packs, you know? So th there's a difference on being worried about the value of cards, but also being mindful that you're just not, you know, throwing money away. And so, that's kind of where I'm at right now. I just wanted to share that with everybody. Um, you know, I I kind of shifted my selling strategies when the market changed from being up here to down here. You know, I showed y'all I went to doing a lot of plain white envelope stuff. The under $20 cards, those are cards that I felt would sell a lot easier. Um, obviously, lower price point, but also people, if they start feeling risk, and they see the markets dropping, um, they're gonna feel more comfortable spending $20 or less on a card because it doesn't have much room to go down than you know, trying to sell two, three, four, five hundred plus dollar cards where there's a lot of validity, validity involved in them. Um, so I, I'm evaluating everything. Um, if you're interested, if you're looking for anything, uh, I will be, you know, continuously adding stuff to eBay. Um, I have still mainly been tossing in, you know, lower priced cards. I do have a bunch of graded stuff that I will be putting up. A lot of it is hockey. Um, I, I thinned out the hockey collection a lot. Uh, but I, I kept a lot too. It just shows how much I've added in in a short period of time. But I really got to liking the sport a lot and I do want to build a strong collection in it. The other thing, um, you know, moving out of this, maybe I can use some of that on these guys that I've just been sitting on to maybe pick up a Jason Robertson future watch or whenever, if it ever comes out, uh, a cup RPA or an ultimate collection RPA, something like that. A really, really strong uh, patch auto copy of his. Uh, maybe I can use some of these guys to, to work into one of those and we'll see how it goes. Um, but anyway, guys, I hope you have a wonderful evening. Uh, great start to your Friday. But uh, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. 
If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Comment down below. Um, what are you doing right now? Are, are you in a path? Are you selling? Are you buying? Are you just flipping? Um, let me know what you're doing. But as always, guys, stay safe, stay healthy. And until the next video, I'm out.